Welcome to your first week of homeschooling using Right Start Maths Level C. I hope you're exi as excited to get started as I am. Today, we're going to go over lessons one through four, what supplies you're going to need, and some of the things to know and consider as you teach these lessons. Uh, here is a list of the materials you're going to need for the week. You're going to need your uh, Level C lesson book. You will also need the Yellow is the Sun book, and the CD. Now, if you don't have a CD player or a CD-ROM in your computer, you can also listen to the songs online. You will need your tally sticks. That are the, these craft sticks. Uh, you will need the colored tiles. And there are four colors to those. You will need the math card games book. And we use the games that are listed in level C second edition is from the fifth edition. You will need the place value cards, and that comes in thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones, like this. You will need the abacus tiles, and of course, you will need the abacus, <laughs> like this. Uh, you will also need something that's not included in your math kit, and that would be a calendar of 12 months where each page is one month. So if you have a calendar around or you can print one out online. You will not need the worksheet book this week. That is a common question. This particular week, you will not, uh, your child will not work through any worksheets. The first lessons in level C are called review lessons. And much of the material covered in these lessons will seem very easy. And it will be tempting for you to skip through them or skip them altogether. However, if you are new to Right Start Math, these lessons are very important for you and your child as they will teach you and your child how to use the manipulatives and strategies in Right Start Math. So let's begin and talk about lesson one. So if you have your manual, go ahead and open it up to lesson one. Notice the title of the lesson. It's called Subitizing Quantities 1 to 7. Now, subitizing simply means a quick recognition of a quantity. So, for example, you know this is 1 simply by seeing it, right? You know this is 3 by seeing it, right? That is subitizing just a quick recognition of a quantity. You are going to wanna be sure that your child can subitize quantities one to seven using their fingers, tally sticks, tiles, and the abacus. I'm not gonna mention this every single day, but if you look at the top left of the page, you will see um, the title objectives. Um, the objectives and everything under there are basically the goals of what will be accomplished in that lesson. So here in lesson one, we know our objective is going to be to construct and subitize quantities one to seven on fingers, tally sticks, tiles, and on the AL abacus. On the right side of the page, you will see the materials listed and needed in the lesson. I'm not going to go over this list right now, but you can see there, um, see the list there. Whenever I get ready to start teaching a lesson, that is the, exact, the very first place my eyes go to is what am I going to need? And I usually send my child to go off and get the materials, but um, you can feel free to get those materials on your own in advance of the lesson. You will warm up the lesson by using the Yellow is the Sun book. You can sing the song, you can listen to the song and sing along with it, or if you're not comfortable singing, um, you can read the poem. Make sure that you and your child raise the correct corresponding fingers to the appropriate words. For example, yellow is the sun, this is only one. Make sure you're doing that as you go along. That will help start the idea of subitizing. After the warm up section, you will start teaching the activity portion of the section. The first um, section is called identifying small quantities. Um, and in here, there's a very interesting study that is written about subitizing and babies. And I, I found it very interesting and I'm sure you and your child will find it interesting as well. Subitizing is explained under the section at the bottom of the first page under showing quantities one to five. At this point in the lesson, you will explain to your child what subitizing is. Most of lesson one is very straightforward. Notice, however, on the second page, uh, your child is going to start building quantities uh, with tiles. And this is the tiles again, in case you don't remember what they were right here. Um, you're going to use two different colors. One color will be the first five, and the second color will, re will represent any quantity over greater than five. So if I have the number six, I'm going to use five 
blue tiles and one yellow tile or red tile, <laughs> whatever color you, your child decides. Um, further down, you're going to use the abacus to show different quantities. Uh, when your child first starts working through the abacus, many times they're going to start counting the beads. So if I say, I'm, I put a piece of white paper behind here so you can see these tiles better, or these uh, beads better. But if I were to say, show me three, many times the child will go one, two, three, and then slide them over. If your child does that, have them clear the abacus and then say, great, now show me three without counting. And your goal is to get them to go straight to that three and scoot the beads over. Now, um, if you are finding a quantity that your child is struggling with, let's say four, then go ahead and let them count the first time, then let them scoot it over and have them practice a couple more, and then go to something easy. Show me one. So you go over there, have them show one, then go back and say, okay, show me four again. So you're gonna to wanna to keep coming back to that four. Now show me five, five one's an easy one. Now show me four. So you're gonna keep coming back to that four or your troublesome, the one that they're struggling with over and over until they um, practice it enough so that they're comfortable with it. It's vitally important that your child start subitizing with the abacus. You will find future lessons and math concepts will be so much easier if they can visualize the quantities without counting. So take this time to really work on subitizing quantities one to seven. Your future self will thank you for it. Um, take a moment, moment though to notice on the explanation section on the right, especially towards the bottom of the second page. Um, by the way, before we start that, um, the explanation portion of the lessons will help you understand what is being taught and why. It also gives you helpful hints in case your child is doing something different from what you expect. Um, so let's go back to uh, the explanation section. Um, part of the way down, it says, or actually towards the bottom, it says, not all children respond well to answering quickly. For some, it creates a stress interfering with learning. Now, what that's referring to is in the lesson, it's asking you, your child, to say the quantity or enter the quantities on the abacus as quickly as they can. Now, some children find that stressful, especially a child that has math anxiety. So you want to be sure to allow your child plenty of time to process the answer. Don't rush them. Give them time to think and show the quantities. Spend enough time on this activity so that you know that they have it down, but not so much time that they start to get bored with it. Each day in the lesson, the lesson will end with a conclusion. Um, and it basically asks just a couple questions to kind of wrap up the lesson in a nice little bow, um, basically information that you had taught today. If your child cannot answer those questions or they're really struggling through them, then you might want to go back and take a look at the lesson again that same day, later on in the day, or maybe the next day. Now, let's go ahead and turn to lesson two. So in today's lesson, you're going to see the materials where you're going to need the calendar. Um, notice that materials that are not included in the Right Start Math Kit are bolded. So you'll see the calendar with 12 months, one per page. That item is bolded. That will tell you that that item is not in your Right Start Math supplies. Under the warm-up section, you are going to see that you're to sing a song called Months to the tune of Michael Finnegan. Now, if you don't know what that tune is, you can look that up on YouTube. That's what I usually do. Um, and or if you're not comfortable singing, you can just say the months as a poem. But you will want to keep that poem in a rhythm. That is what's going to really help those months stick. So January, February, March, and April, May. June, July, and August. Keeping those uh, syncopation and that rhythm will help, help those months stick in your child's mind. In lesson two, you're, always, you're going to work on subitizing quantities eight through 10. You're going to again use fingers, tally sticks, um, tiles, and the abacus. And you were going to also learn how to group in fives. Now notice on the second page, uh, under the section of explanations, uh, you will see uh, the first comment listed under the explanations. It says, it is critically important that your child enter these quantities without counting. I know I mentioned that to, um, to consider for day one, but I want to send you a reminder. It is very important that you pull your child away from the habit of counting. If they start to count, let them count the first time, 
clear the abacus, have them go back to showing that quantity without counting. Um, also on the second page, your child will build stairs. And you'll see a picture of that on the lesson manual. If your child struggles with that for some reason, um, you can go, look over to the explanation section of the lesson and you will see some helpful hints on how to help your child build those stairs. In lesson two, you are going to play your first math card game. The game is called Go to the Dump, which is basically Go Fish. Um, you can find instructions on the game by going to your math card games manual. Go to the edition chapter and you'll find the game um, numbered A3. We also have this game available as an app. So if your child absolutely loves playing this game and you have younger children coming up, you may want to go ahead and get that app and put it on your device or their device for them to play anytime that you're traveling, sitting at a restaurant waiting to be seated or whatever. Um, my kids absolutely love this game and I think your children will too. Now let's go ahead and turn to lesson three. Uh, the warm-up section here, we're going to have um, our child practice the math facts to 10 again. Um, same thing that we did yesterday with playing go to the dump. One thing you're going to notice under the sections uh, 10 on the abacus is that you're going to have your child say the quantities the math way. Now, this is one of those activities that many parents skip. Uh, with the excuse that their child already knows their numbers and they don't want to confuse their children. But the fact is your child is so much more resilient and more flexible than you think. Um, by saying the quantities, in this case tens, um, in the math way, they are learning and understanding place value so much better. Uh, children learn in a variety of ways, visually, kinesthetically, auditorially. Uh, this activity is the auditory part of their learning. So don't skip it. It really will enhance um, enhance your child's understanding of place value. Um, on the second page of this lesson, you will see naming quantities section. And here you're going to um, give various quantities that your child is going to say out loud. 2107, 7102, uh, 1101, and so forth. Um, if your child needs more examples, keep coming up with these examples and do it as long as you uh, need to until you know that your child has a good grasp on this. Today's math card game is Can You Find, and that's game N43 from the Number Sense chapter of the, of the math card game manual. You will need the place value cards when you play this game, but you will only need the ones and the tens, the ones and the tens to play this game. You will not need the hundreds or the thousands to play this game today. All right, let's turn to lesson four, the last lesson for the week. One thing I want you to take a look at, I love this, um, under the section called Titled One, uh, it'll say, with a smile, ask. <laughs> and I just wanted to stop right there. I love how this lesson and this section actually reminds us the fun parts of teaching, uh, the fun parts of homeschooling. Make sure that your child is having fun and enjoying math every day. Stop, have a smile, um, tell a joke, whatever it is, keep math fun. Keep learning fun. Math is not about tears and frustration. Instead, you need to create a fun environment so your child will learn so much better. Uh, this lesson will continue to help your child get a firm grasp on place value. So don't rush through it and don't skip sections. It is vital that your child understands place value when they get to borrowing and carry carrying as well as other uh, math concepts. Those on concepts depend on their child understanding place value. So take a look under the hundreds section. You will see how it has the child ask um, how many tens are in 100. That might be a new concept that your child might need to think through. If necessary, go ahead and get the abacus out, show your child 100 beads, and if, if they know this is 100 beads, then tell them how many tens are there. And if they need to, go ahead and count the first time. But then continue asking that same question throughout the remainder of the lesson. So how many tens is in 100? 10 tens. And then later on, how many tens are in 100? 10 tens. Um, also, now on the second page of the lesson, under the section called Recording Hundreds, you will see how they will use the hundreds place value card and also have you say the um, say the number showing the digits. So you would say 200. 
I love how it shows, uses the syllables to help your child know how many digits are required to say a quantity. So if, um, if I have 200, I'm going to have 200 needs three digits because we said three syllables. Yesterday we learned about the tens and we did the same thing, two, 10. Two syllables were the 10 needing two digits and two and three syllables were the hundreds needing three digits. Now, while that sounds kind of fun and cutesy now, um, it really will help them later on because when you build a number, say 205, the only digits they hear are the two and the five. And so they'll want to build it something like this. However, if they know that hundreds, 200, needs three digits and I only have two, we know something's wrong. So we'll help them to realize that we need the three digits. So don't skip over this section. Don't rush through it really quick. Enjoy that extra little tidbit of information because you don't know that might be that final little click for your child to catch on. Lesson four, we'll finish up the activities by playing a game uh, that you also played in lesson three, can you find? But you will also include the hundreds place value cards in addition to the tens and the ones. Also notice, this, this lesson will give you um, a list of numbers to find. So can you find 400? Can you find 43 or 4103? Use both terminology, the traditional way of saying numbers and the math way of saying numbers. Um, can you find 629? If, you're fi if you find that your child needs to have more practice than what's listed here, um, a cheat way of doing that to come up with new numbers is just to simply use a number that's already there and kind of flip the digits around. So for number five, you can see where it says, can you fi find 629? For me, I would just basically say, can you find 296? Can you find 600 or 962? So I just kind of change the digits that are there to give my child more practice. Okay, now you're ready to start teaching. Remember, keep math fun and exciting for your child. Don't forget that if you have any questions or concerns at all, email us or call us for help. We are here for you. Have a wonderful week, and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday when we will talk about lessons five through nine. Goodbye, everybody.